All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop on Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I'm joined by Susan O'Malley, Dr. Susan O'Malley. And where are you today, Susan? I am in Connecticut. Oh, excellent. Where there is still snow on the ground. Oh, wow. Well, I'm in San Diego, which is well, actually still a bit rainy. I've, uh, I've been saying to people that I'm going to put in for a tax rebate from the California state government because we've had nearly a month of rain and that's not what I pay taxes for. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Susan was a, a doctor, um, or it's well, still is a doctor, but was an it was an e- ER a do- e- ER doctor, and um, and then parlayed her experience of working in the ER into uh, into business and drawing on her personal experiences to help people overcome adversity and persevere and do better in their businesses. She has this great book, Tough Cookie, Tough Cookies Don't Crumble, Turning Setbacks into Success. And, and what I was just talking before we came on air with Susan about was what fascinated me about uh, Susan's background is being a doctor in ER, uh, uh, as you said, you are running a team all the time, right? But mm-hmm. the team members yeah. are changing constantly depending on shifts and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And more and more in business, uh, we have to operate with cross-functional teams. And that often means that people are leading a team of of other people who they may not have worked with much before, maybe don't know that well before, but have a deadline and have to deliver. And this is becoming more and more of a challenge. Mm-hmm. So, Susan, what did uh, what were some of the the stark lessons that you learned when you had to lean lead teams of people who could change on a daily basis? Yeah. So, you know, in the emergency room, uh, every shift was different. The staff was different. The patients were different. The challenges were different. But what I realized was the leadership principles remained the same. Those were the same principles. And um, in the emergency room, I was everybody's favorite emergency room doctor. And they would greet me when I would come on a shift like, oh, my God, I'm so happy it's you. And at first I thought, well, you know, they're, they're just being nice. You know, that's crazy. But I, be, I began to realize that um, because they began to open up, um, telling me different challenges that they faced with different different leadership styles. And um, and I was everybody's favorite emergency room doctor. And it was really very simple. I treated people like they mattered. Mm -hmm. I think one of the the biggest lessons that any leader can take is to value everybody on your team. And your team is bigger than you think, because especially corporate people tend to think of teams as their direct reports. But anybody whose job enables you to do your job is on your team. And I say from the stage, if you work late into the night, the pizza delivery man is on your team. Yeah. FedEx delivery man is on your team. The woman who comes and cleans your office is on your team because if they didn't do their job, you couldn't do your job. Yeah, and I think that's a fa- and I think that's a wonderful point uh, to make here. I mean, I I love that concept because I do think that we can have a tendency to get wrapped up in our own group and to mm-hmm. think of things in very narrow contexts. And that's what I'm saying when you get pushed out to to manage a team of other people. And as you say, it may not even be all internal resources. It could be a- external resources, and it could be, mm-hmm. as you say, people providing, uh, you know, a service on a on a on uh, at intervals you know like the pizza delivery person yeah. or whatever maybe that's and maybe that's just as critical because if you didn't get the pizza on time maybe you wouldn't be able to work that extra two that's hours that's right that's right yeah. and another thing i think that is so critically important is because people think that um the the, the success depends on the people that they pick and i say the success of your team begins with you mm-hmm. because the leader sets the tone And if you're frenetic, so is your team. And if you're volatile, so is your team. And if you're respectful, so is your team. Mm -hmm. And so I say that it all comes back. And every one of my strategies from the stage is personal responsibility from the leader, not from the team. It's all from the leader. Yeah. And what's what's really interesting about the, the ER situation, right, is that, okay, in in ER, by its very nature, 
I mean, things can suddenly change on a dime, right? You know, say there's a car crash or something yeah. and it's a quiet yeah. night. Everybody's, you know, just handling the sprained ankle here and there. Yeah. And suddenly there's something catastrophic and everything has to go into into high gear. In in corporate settings, when there's sudden dramatic changes like that, it just discombobulates everybody. It's like, well, why didn't we have warning? You know, why do we suddenly yeah. have to do this and all of that? And everybody gets yeah. all. So how do you handle that in an ER situation? Because the changes are so dramatic, but you have to be able to deal with them. Uh, so that's an interesting question. You know, um, I say the success of your team begins with you, but you have to have competent people mm -hmm. in your um, you know, on your team. And if it like when when that would happen in the emergency room, because that could happen, you know, you could be sitting there with your feet up on the desk, you know, everybody laughing and smiling and, and the the emergency room doors open and, you know, blood is all over the floor and everybody is, you know, is screaming and hyper and everything else. And when everyone knows what their job is and when everyone knows how to do their job, and when everyone takes pride in their work, and when everyone feels that their work is valued, everyone is right there. Because when people fear the leader, they strive to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And when people love the leader, they strive to protect the leader. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great point yeah. there. But and I love the idea of you saying, you know, being competent people who know their job. Yeah. And I think and I think that's a that's a, a point worth underlining because I think if you if you can communicate that you trust the people, then they will mm -hmm. be able to turn on a dime. If yes. you communicate that you don't trust them, well then they'll resist, right? right? Right. Because then when someone knows that you don't trust them, then they are splitting their energy between doing their job and taking care of themselves, protecting themselves. And when they know that you trust them and you have their back, then they're all in. So tell me this uh, this idea. So um, and you wrote the book on turning setbacks into success, right? Yes. And and obviously in high pressured environments, you know, like the ER, there are, there's probably setbacks constantly, right? And the same because the pace of business change is happening so fast that um, you know things don't always go everybody's way. How do you harness? How do you turn that uh, into a uh, that setback into a success as opposed to start a, a downward spiral? So that's not just one easy answer, mm -hmm. because that when I wrote that book, I based that book on a lot of challenges that I had because um, I was a single mother. I started medical school at 34 years old. My son was born on Christmas vacation and every decision I made um, from there on was a decision that was made for the two of us, not mm -hmm. just me alone. And um, there were many strategies uh, along the way, like, you know, you don't like asking for help. You know, I mean, like I'm an emergency room doctor. I'm a physician. I'm a helper. Mm -hmm. Helping is is more natural for me than having to ask for help. And a lot of times that happens in business as well. Yeah. You know, admitting when you make a mistake. You know, I mean, that's really hard, especially as a doctor, especially as an emergency room doctor. But come on, nobody is perfect. You know, yeah. we all mistakes and you know I, i'm persevering like you know like like I'll, I'll give you an example like when i first stood there i started medical school six months pregnant no husband didn't have any idea how i was going to do it i couldn't look at graduation and say wow i can't wait till i graduate i couldn't even look to next week all i could look to there were nights i put my head on the pillow i said thank you god that the day is over because mm -hmm. tomorrow's a new day and we start all over again but you know persevering you know and and it's, so it's it's many things it's not you know it's it's taking personal responsibility it's it's not just one thing that helps you overcome you know adversity yeah and and you and by the way i just think you hit on another fantastic point there that i want to emphasize for the audience and that is the idea of a lot of what prevents people from being successful or teams from being successful or whatever is, yes, you have to know what the goal is and you have to be focused on reaching the goal. But then you have to chunk it down into what are the steps I need to take 
and focus on the next step rather than focusing some because if you focus too far in the distance that's what that's why people don't attempt things because yeah. it just looks too hard yeah, and then yeah. yeah and then when yeah. you do do it and suddenly the time has passed and it's succeeded you're like wow that wasn't so bad after all yeah yeah. And not even that, it, you know, like sometimes like because you, you really can't see when you when you're first starting out. And sometimes if you can just like get even halfway through and because it's so much easier to look back and yeah. say, wow, look what I accomplished than to look forward and say, oh, look what I still have to do. So, it, yeah, you know, it, it's you know, and that sounds so cliche. Oh, it's a journey, but it's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. But, yeah, yeah. But, but, but life is a journey. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so how did you here's another question. So how. How did you help in in an ER situation, right? As you said, you got different people every day. I mean, sometimes, obviously, you would maybe have very inexperienced people. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you would have somebody who, you know, maybe not your favorite person who ends up on your mm -hmm. team that yeah. day. So, yeah. I mean, how do you handle situations like that where maybe the team isn't of your choosing and yeah. you have to deal with all these different variables? And maybe yeah. some of your own biases, too. And that's that's a great question, because that happens because mm -hmm. you don't like everybody and not everybody likes you. Yeah. But if you can keep yourself focused on why we're all here, because in medicine, you're not here. It's not a personality contest. We're here yeah. to do a service for somebody who is in dire straits. And um, and also, you know, in the emergency room, this is something that I learned that I didn't even realize I was doing that was so important because this really endears you to people. Whenever I ask somebody to, first of all, I would never ask anyone to do anything that I had not or I would not have done myself. Right. I never did that. Secondly, when I did ask someone to do something, order this blood test, get this x-ray, take this person a CAT scan, right away, we need this, we need that. When I got the result, I tracked that person down. Hey, I want you to look at this x-ray. She's got pneumonia, we're gonna admit her to the hospital because it made people feel like they were part of the team. Mm -hmm. And when people feel like they're part of the team, they want that it's that that's all we all want. No yeah. matter where you are, no matter what walk of life you're in, we all want to be accepted, we all want to be validated, we all want to be seen and we all want to be heard. Yeah. And it's really so simple. And 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 again, it's you know we we consider ourselves or perceive ourselves to be so busy and everything's moving forward that we often forget those fundamentals of actually yeah. going back and going back and acknowledging. And the other interesting thing you mentioned earlier about the idea of the, you know, the leader asking for help. And I do think that that is that's where a lot of people, you know, especially maybe early on in their leadership, or whatever, but they do fall down because they think I've been put in charge. I should know yeah. everything. That's right. Yeah. So when I first started, actually all through my, my emergency room career, but especially when I first started and I would find myself on an overnight shift and it would be me and two nurses. If I didn't know what I was, and listen, I, I took all comers opinions. What do you think? What do you think? You know, it, here's an important, an important concept for people. Even though I was the one in charge, I never acted like I was the smartest one in the room because half the time I didn't feel like I was the smartest no. one in the room. <laughs> but I never acted like I was the smartest one in the room. And if I found myself on an overnight shift at night and I didn't quite know and the nurses didn't quite know, I picked up the phone and I called the pharmacist, the 24 hour pharmacist right around the corner. And bless his heart, that man would put down his work and talk to me for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever I needed. He knew more about medicine and how to treat disease mm -hmm. than I could have ever known at six months on the job. Even as I became a seasoned emergency room doctor, if I got to a point where I didn't know, I would call a colleague and I would say, listen, not your patient, not your case. You don't have any obligation here, but something has me stumped. And I was hoping that two heads are better than one and I could run this case by you. And my colleagues would put down their dinner fork and be on the phone with me for however long it took. Yeah, and I think that's a and I think that's a critical takeaway from anybody watching or listening to this is that is that idea of of reaching out and asking for help that it's not a sign of weakness, it's not a sign of a, it's actually a sign of strength, and it's uh, and I do uh, one of the things that that I learned at, at one stage of of my leadership career, and I always found that it, it really helped was you know sometimes when somebody would you know we'd be having a team meeting or something and somebody would ask me a question and I'd just go. You know, I don't know. I don't know the don't answer know. to that. 
I don't know yeah. the answer to that. Uh, does anyone yeah. else? You know, uh, and just yeah. rather than you know, BS some thing that I pull out of the air just because I feel like I have to have yeah. an answer. Absolutely. It was much better to say, no, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I would have to because you know what? The crime isn't in not knowing. Mm -hmm. The crime is in not knowing when to look it up. Yeah. Because somebody has the answer somewhere. Mm -hmm. And 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 nowadays, I mean, especially in 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 business. Well, I mean, I, I guess so. Probably in uh, in the medical field as well. I mean, everything is becoming so specialized in in many ways. It's like if you have a um, you know, like I run a marketing team as well. It's like, you know, we have search engine optimization people, mm -hmm. we've email marketing. There's, you cannot be an expert in everything. You have to yeah. find the expertise and harness yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because, you know, when you, um, when you specialize in everything, you specialize in nothing. Yeah. And then yeah. it comes back to that trust piece, because then you have to say, okay, I don't really know anything about this piece. So I have to make sure that I hire somebody who really knows about it. And then I trust that what they're doing is correct. And they show me the results to prove it. Right. And listen, you know, in the emergency room, everyone had a different level of competence. And I knew, especially after working with people for a little while, who was who was smarter, who was better, who was quicker, who was this or that or the other. And it, it was even though, you know, I tried to be inclusive and encompassing and everything when I was working with people that I knew were not at the same level, mm -hmm. it was stressful because then I had to split my energy between doing my job and making sure that they were doing their job because no matter what happened, the buck was going to stop with me. Yeah. And I think that's another, that's another fascinating point to, to say to people is, is that you have to, I mean, you know, you can't just be blase about things, right? You can't just go, okay, I'm just, I'll outsource that. You have yeah. to make sure that if you're delegating or you're handing something off, that you're handing it off to the right person with the right yeah. with the right skill set, yeah. and they're ready to take it. Because there's, yeah. cause then, then again, that's, that's the pendulum going the other way is when you're just giving stuff to people, but you, you know, you don't know whether they actually can handle it yet. Right. And then what kind of leader are you? Yeah. And you're setting because, them up to fail. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the role of a leader, in my opinion, is to bring out the leader in everyone around you. Mm -hmm. You it's, know, because you can, we can all boss people around, <laughs> you know, you know, who can't boss people around, <laughs> but, but you know, that you, that doesn't that's not what a leader does yeah and it's fascinating as we come to the end it's one of the questions i always ask somebody uh, because it always seems in 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 a business context is when you talk to maybe you're doing a review or an appraiser for someone and you say you know, you know what, what do you want to do next you know what's the next progression of your career and so often people say well, I'd like to be a manager or I'd like to be a leader. You know, I'd like to lead the group. And I always sort of ask, why? Why would you want to do that? Yeah. And uh, and they think, oh, I'd be really good at it. And then I say sometimes like, well, let me tell you what it's really like. I said, you're sometimes you feel like a parent. Sometimes you feel like a psychologist. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you're yeah. totally I mean, it's hard. People are hard. So why do you want to do it? And I think that to your point, though, I don't think people put enough thought into what it means to actually lead people. I agree. I agree. And um, and I think also because, you know, times are changing now. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm actually the dinosaur now in work. You know, I mean, I came up in a time when you worked in an office, people worked in the office for 25 years, got the gold watch, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. And, and you know, and everything I did, because even now, if I went back to the emergency room, it's totally different. You know, everyone's yeah. on iPads. You know, I was writing charts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, so I grew up in a time when there was more communication, more face-to-face -face mm -hmm. or on-the-phone communication. It's a digital world now, yeah. and everybody is, um, is separate. And it takes really a lot of energy to reach out and form those connections now. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I call it the the uh, the disconnected, connected world because yeah. the more connected we are digitally, the kind of less yeah. connected we are humanly, and and that has its own uh, its own challenges. I mean, I even see sometimes uh, you know communicating with you know my doctor or my wife's doctor now is done through email, which you would have never thought of before, right? It'd been unheard no. of. No, yeah. unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. Yeah. 
So we're bumping up against the end of our time. But before we go, Susan, uh, would you like to tell people a little bit more about yourself, about how they can contact you and find out more about you? Absolutely. Thank you so much. So the best way to learn about me would be at my website, SusanO'MalleyMD.com, O-M-A-L-L-E-Y, MD.com. Um, you, my book is on there, or you can find the book on Amazon, but it, everything is easier, really, if you just go to the website. And um, Tough Cookies Don't Crumble, Turn Setbacks into Success. And um, if you would like to reach out or learn more about me, or if you have a group or an organization that needs a speaker, please, the, just it's just easier on the contact page, and I will get back to you myself. So thank you so much. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. Dr. Susan, this has been fascinating. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you all again for an expert interview soon. My pleasure.